Welcome to HTX. So everybody's talking now about the new Radio Master Pocket Radio, but not as much about this new Jumper T20 radio, which I think is quite a worthy contender, or even better in some cases than the Radio Master Boxer, which I have reviewed in a previous video. Compared with the Radio Master Boxer, I think this has much better ergonomics, sits way better in the hand, and will have a much higher chance of replacing my daily driver Zorro by the end of this video. In the box it comes with an HTX manual, neck strap, USB-C charging cable, a set of stickers which you have to stick on the six illuminated programmable switches here, and a battery holder that doesn't hold the usual 18650s, it holds the bigger 21700 cells, so you can uh, put two cells up to 2S 5000 mAh capacity, which will give this smaller 4 factor radio quite quite a long uh, on time even with a big LRS module on it. Ergonomics is clearly better than the boxer as you can easily hold it in one hand and reach all of the switches. It has two two position switches on the side, two three position switches, two momentary latching switches here, uh, two pots up to six potentiometers are like two here, the two here, and another two here. I don't know why you need that many pot uh, analog potentiometers, but you have them. Dual trim switches. All this, each one of this has a uh, four direction trim. Trim, trim. So we can, these are the main trim switches. These are for other, uh, other pots or other usage if you want to set them. Has a nice uh, metal kickable roller wheel. A nice feature, crisp OLED display, which is also a nice fast response, and comes with HDX out of the box. It comes with two types of uh, gimbals, these Hall Effect gimbals, which are feel quite quite sturdy. I don't think you need to replace them with the AG1 type gimbals, which do fit. You only really need to change the connector. Internally, it has a earless module. For 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz, both one watt uh, modules. So you can only get it with ERLS, no other options. Up top we have the headphone jacks and the USB C connector, which is for data and also charging. One nice thing about charging it, this six illuminated uh, switcher will illuminate gradually. And when all of them six are lit, that means the battery is nice and full, so you can have a nice indication of the charge state. It has all of the switches you can basically need. These momentary side switches, you have to press on the side, not on the edge. That's how it works, but it's, it's nice because that's where your finger naturally sits. On the back you have a nice metal handle next to the big heatsink. Any adjustments for the gimbals would have to be done from inside the radio, so I have to take the whole back off to do that. Inside we have the two big 5000 milliamp cells. Uh, underneath this rubber seal here, you'll have an XT30, used for external power to a, an external RF module, and a port that goes to the Nano RF modules here, if you have to want to add an external one. The grips are nice rubbery, so it's, it's quite quite ergonomic in the hand. The plastic is a nice dark bluish tint. It's a lot darker than it shows on camera. As a size comparison, it's not quite, it's not really bigger than the Radio Master Zorro even on top. It's clearly heavier as this has a four times bigger battery than you can fit, you can possibly fit in a Zorro without putting an external one. So it does feel quite a, a bit heavy in the hand, but not really that heavy. I will definitely use a neck strap on this. We have a lot 
lot of potentiometer here that we can go all the way. There you go. Really nice crisp OLED screen. Now, compared to its bigger brother, it's clearly a lot smaller and way more easy to hold. It has exactly the same gimbals, but compared to the Zorro, it's really, really similar. So it would easily fit in any kind of bag, especially if the jumper would make a foldable small antenna for it. So the gimbals, as I said, you can have the Hall Effect gimbals or you have the RDC90, which is a potentiometer gimbal, which sounds worse, but it actually has better linearity than the Hall Effect gimbals. But the downside is it's more expensive and those will wear out. So just get the Hall Effect gimbals or replace them with the Radio Master ones. You can also only get it with a ELLS module. This heat big heat sink on the back, it will get hot even with lower power. But even if you're not using it, the full one, one, this will get hot. But the grip and the ergonomics in the hand feel really nice. Also has two holes here to a, so you can add additional switches if you need to or want to do that. But overall, this is this is really nice. Full size gimbal, compact radio with the big batteries, and all of the latest features you could possibly need. If you remove the battery cover and the two uh, rubber side screws, you find four screws here and another two screws here in order to remove the back panel, so you can adjust the spring tension of the gimbals. Internally, it's quite interesting, but also really difficult to get the back cover off as it has uh, one, two, three, four, five connections to take out, which are not long enough cables. On the back is just the momentary switches and the potentiometer. This is also where the 1 1 module is placed. It's an Ion E30 2.4 GHz M30S modules, module here. With the ESP32 uh, microcontroller near it, as most uh, ERS modules are. Internally, these two switches are barely holding place at this point. So the antenna connector goes on the back, this also has to be disconnected. What's really interesting to it, it doesn't have an SD card or a micro SD card. I see only this small flash here and the internal flash of the uh, SDM32 microcontroller. So that's a quite a big difference from any other uh, HTX or OpenTX radio. Other than that, there's one small ribbon cable for the uh, connectors, for the buttons, the metal scroll wheel, battery cell. The gimbals are basically the Jumber T18 gimbals. They're quite, quite sturdy, quite fine. Up top we have the external RF module power and the charging infrastructure to charge the two cells inside. Other than that, surprisingly it has like two speaker locations, the only one that's fitted, which also uh, pumps the volume out. Other than that, basic switches, all with the wire, so it's easily replaceable. Just the economics to getting all of this off, it's quite, quite hard. Yeah, oh, the battery connector is here, it's on the side, so it's quite difficult to get the battery holder inside. Nothing really to tell here, it looks quite, quite good. Quite well made. I did find a couple of solder points that did need a cleaning. They do look a bit loose. Other than that, everything worked, so that's a very good sign. Nice small scroll wheel. This can be easily replaced with like an external antenna or even inside here. It does come off. 
Maybe we can put like a nice foldable T-shape antenna there. The RF module, it's like it's, I think it's glued onto the back radiator. There's no fan to cool this. So this back radiator will get hot. It being outside, and should have good enough fresh air to hold that. One watt power. Overall, this has a really nice feel in the hand. I like, do like the screen, quite visible even outdoors. I would like a foldable antenna. That would be a nice upgrade if Jumper will ever release or just buy one. Also, the external RF module adapter it's not does not come with the radio, so you have to buy one. I know Jumper also makes a 4-in-1 module, which is also metal and very thin, that you can easily attach here. And this definitely has a higher chance of replacing my daily life with Zorro, as the boxer didn't really have the ergonomics that I wanted, especially with the top arm switches that it had.